Welcome back, everybody. Tomorrow, I will be releasing Season 2, Episode 3 of the Artist Series. And this one will feature Lourdes Grobe, who is a wonderful photographer. I think she's probably one of the lesser-known photographers that I featured on the series. So I thought I would provide a little bit of context moving into that video so you'll be familiar with what she does. Um, the first time I ran across Lourdes' work was probably about 10 years ago. And I remember running across this book of portraits of Lucha Libre wrestlers. And these were portraits that were done in their homes with their families always wearing the mask. And I thought these were really great. And there's another series that she did of occupational portraits of these wrestlers in their day jobs. And so there's policemen, there's teachers, there's bodyguards, there's one of a dentist. And I really loved this work. And there was something somewhat absurd, yet kind of had a sense of humor to it. And I thought these were really great. And it was exciting this year when I got the green light on the artist series and knew I would be going to Mexico. She was at the top of the list of people that I wanted to interview. And I'm really excited that I got she and Graciela Iturbide in the same trip because both of them are female photographers, they're from Mexico, and they both have a way of embracing the heritage and the traditions and the history of Mexico, and that kind of culminates in who they are, but at the same time, there's a wonderful juxtaposition because their work looks nothing alike. Lourdes is a completely different approach to photography than Graciela is. In fact, Lourdes, one of the things that I love about her so much is that she can be somewhat of a chameleon in terms of the style that she shoots in, Every project that she has done is taken with a different approach, different medium, and a really a much a, a different style. And I think this is something that makes her really interesting. And, and in addition to the wrestling images that she spent 30 years uh, working with the luchadores to, to, to make, she was also at the same time working with this indigenous theater group in Mexico. And it's totally different work. This is a theater that is done outdoors in traditional costumes, uh, in the traditional languages. And one day, I really want to go do that. You can go see these performances, but usually they're outside the city, and so it didn't work out this last trip. But those are done in a completely different style. They're black and white images. Some of them are fairly traditional, but then some of them are done in infrared. And there's a really haunting, beautiful quality that they have to them. And so I think you're going to really like Lourdes. She's a lot of fun, and she's very different than any of the other photographers that I've featured on the Artist Series. Now, we do talk in this interview very extensively about her work with Lucha Libre wrestling. And so I want to talk a little bit about that to give you some context around that going into it because there's some things that'll make more sense. Now, when I was growing up in the United States, um, I, I've always thought that Lucha Libre was the Mexican equivalent to WWF and the World Wrestling Federation. It turns out it's nothing like that. I mean, WWF is kind of a silly theatrical um, form of wrestling that's highly televised and highly commercial and has some influences from Lucha Libre, but it really is a lot different. And when I started to research this before for our interview, um, it's really exciting because this all is pre-television, pre-everything, and it's this old sport tradition of Greco-Roman wrestling with fewer rules, so it's freestyle, but it's the same principle. To defeat your opponent, you have to pin them down while the ref counts to three, and that's how you win the match. And then there's some regulations on how you can use the ropes and how, what you can't do in terms of pinning your opponent, but other than that, it's largely freestyle. And you look at it, and a lot of these wrestlers they're amazing athletes for one. And then two, there's this element of theater and dance that comes into it. And so it's really like nothing else I've ever seen. A lot of the older wrestling uh, was done in these arenas and people would go and it was this highly communal event between the action that was going on in the ring and the audience and the way people would get into this. And I think the only equivalent that I could come up to from an American perspective would be, it's, it's sort of a superhero tradition. These wrestlers will assume an identity that is that you see through the mask, and that is the role that they play. They become that person, and that is their career. And it's pretty amazing. And then the, the characters fall into one of two groups. You have the technicos, which means literally the technicians, and those are the good guys. And then you have the rudos, and the rudos are the bad guys, the troublemakers. And it is possible through career moments that somebody who is a Rudo can transfer over and become a good guy. And you see that every now and then. The most famous wrestler by far was a gentleman named El Santo who started his career in 1942. El Santo is characterized by the silver mask. In fact, check this out. I found, this is my El Santo t-shirt. I'm very proud of this and I had to wear it today for the little preview video. So anyway, that's El Santo. Um, El Santo was the most famous wrestler. He was the Ansel Adams of wrestling. He was the Beethoven of wrestling, whatever you want to equate that to. He was a superstar. And probably one of the other most famous wrestlers, there are a couple of them. There's Black Shadow, but Black Shadow's partner, Black Shadow was defeated by El Santo. 
Blue Damon is the other one. And Blue Damon crossed over from being a Rudos, became a good guy, and he and El Santo, once rivals, became partners. And the two of these guys did hundreds of movies. And these movies are all pretty much B-type movies, and they're really pretty bad. They're kind of like the old Batman TV show, and maybe even worse in spots. <laughs> Anyway, they were big time celebrities, but in Mexico, which was very different than Hollywood, and they had these wonderful careers. And Lourdes was friends with both of them. She knew them both very well. She knew their families. And so she talks a lot about her experience with El Santo and Blue Damon. So I wanted to set that up because when she starts talking about El Santo and Blue Damon and you don't know who they are, it might not make a lot of sense. But uh, anyway, the wrestling tradition is, is, is fascinating. And I asked Lourdes, if I could take her to a wrestling match while we were there. I thought that would be an amazing way to get B-roll. And she had to cancel because of family commitments and she was leaving town the next day to go do this project she's working on right now in the Bering Straits. So it didn't work out, but she did promise me a rain check on that. So the next time I'm in Mexico, I gotta see theater and I have to see wrestling. Those are the, the big two. But anyway, this is a very fun video. It's very different than anything else I've done. And um, I think it's a nice juxtaposition to other things in the artist series, particularly the video I did on Graciela Itabide. So that will be coming up tomorrow so check it out you won't be disappointed and if you've enjoyed this video please remember to like it share it subscribe to the art of photography hit that little bell notification on the subscribe tab so you'll be notified the moment the artist series videos come out until the next video i'll see you guys then later